I actually do want this carpet. I think that, mar that carpet's gonna pay out for us in the long run. So, from, going from Kabul... Let's go all the way to Agra. There we go. Departs for Agra tomorrow at 8 a.m. 22 hearts lost, but... Aw, oh shit, it only carries two bags. Oh, and there's a carriage, too. I don't know if we're going to be able to negotiate that. Well, let's explore a bit. I don't know, I'm worried. I should have paid attention to the type of transportation and the amount of bags. But at the same time, I would have had to get to Agra eventually, right? Even if I got to Delhi and all that shit. Like, I guess the ultimate plan is to get to Benares and then uh, Chitachong. Or Chittagong, excuse me. So we're making a bit of a straight line towards here. I guess if it becomes pricey, I can at least think about the fact that I do have items that are worth selling and are going to be worth a pretty penny, but... I guess the big question is... Am I, am I underestimating, like the actual prices is something going to become too out of my control and i'm just going to like underestimate entirely what i'm capable of like in terms of carrying all this luggage because i have a lot of stuff and a lot of useful stuff i'm worried about getting rid of those timetables let me actually look where i would assume that maybe i can get rid of the indian um timetable maybe because i'm already past it I'm just always so nervous about getting rid of those. I don't know, it's driving me bonkers. As we explored the city, we were rather unceremoniously seized up by a score of British infantry and marched along the walls of Kabul up the mountain ridge into the fortress of Balahisa. Monsieur Fogg protested our treatment. And I stayed silent as befit a gentleman's valet. We were presented to a small but speckled gentleman in a palatial office which looked rather more like a court despite the piles of books and surveyor's equipment littering the floor. He gave us a glance over his spectacle rims. I am, I am Mr. Smith, second assistant political officer to the British mission here. I do not have the pleasure of your acquaintance. I glanced at my master, who straightened his cuffs but otherwise looked as though he might have been out for a mid-morning stroll and had wandered by merest happenings into the Afghan palace fort. I am Mr. Phileas Fogg, and this is my valet, Pastor Padu. I am a subject of Her Majesty and passing through Kabul with no small urgency. Urgency? The political officer's eyes flashed behind his lenses. Pray expand a little upon the nature of this urgency, Mr. Fogg. Monsieur Fogg was not used to being on the other side of the interrogation table, and I felt rather protective of him as Ms. Monsieur Fogg explained his wager and a resultant breakneck neck trip around the world. I could see Smith growing more astonished with each word. Finally, he took off his glasses and tapped them on the table. Were you Russian or Persian spies, he said musingly, you would have a more plausible sp story. I'm trying to keep my mouth shut. I have to trust my friend. My master, excuse me. I could not, in all honesty, disagree. My ma master's ongoing willingness to risk life, limb, and valet for a bet seemed to be me the height of nonsense. I fear I did not keep my thoughts from my face either as I saw Monsieur Fogg's cold glance in my direction. Monsieur Smith's eyebrow raised in an eerie mirroring of my master's expression, and then he cleared his throat. A friend of mine is traveling to... Um, so I consider it a great favor if you accompanied her.
Omsk is quite far, I hedged. Yes, but at Omsk you can catch the Trans-Siberian Express all the way to Usuris, or change at Karim Skaya for Beijing, he explained. Think on it. He dismissed us and returned to his papers without a mere second glance. Quite a commanding fellow for a mere second assistant political officer. Omsk. Where is that on the map? Please don't tell me it's up here. It's... It's all the way up here. So, he's saying that I could catch the express all the way to Beijing. So, it would be like this, and then this. I guess that would make more sense than cutting through here, but then... The financial opportunities that I have would go down. I would assume that... From, like, here, like Chittagong and all that, I could get to... Hong Kong and then make my way across the sea to Honolulu. I'm going to I'm going to stay with my I'm going to stay with my plan. I don't know. God damn, look at that. It looks it looks convincing on paper. But sometimes the most obvious route is not the best route, as they say. I say we stick to the trip to Agra. And hope I don't have to sell a lot of this stuff. If I do... Let's start moving things. I gotta be strategic here. I guess I can sell this in the end timetable. I'm really thinking about it. I'm not even towards the desert now, so maybe I can get rid of this too. Ooh, I can take this opportunity to like maneuver these things. All right. This tea might still be useful. I need to keep that in mind. So I've managed to narrow myself down to three bags. Which is good, but I don't know if that's going to pay out in the long run. Continue to attend to him. His health has been a deteriorating factor for a long time now. <laughs> Zestful, passionate, remarkable. Oh, I'm a remarkable valet now. Awesome. Higher extra space, thank you. The water bladder from our desert traveler set should see us to write. So, oh, thank goodness. I have just saved my master a lot of suffering. Good. So we decided to totally... Alright, I want to get to Benares. I want to get to Benares. Benares. I heard that Agra walks from place to place. Is that not remarkable? Ah, there we go. Improved uh, his well-being. I was actually hoping to talk with somebody to figure out a route to Benair, but... Is what it is. In all honesty, our trip is actually starting to shape up. Mm -hmm. 
So he said something about Singapore, right? And we can get there from Calcutta? So I'd be able to travel all the way here. And then maybe to Manila. I don't, I don't know if there'd be a particular benefit to that, but... Hmm. The Grand Truck Road, stretching from Afghanistan to Bengal, was an ancient trade route. The Maras had once used it to trade with the ancient Greeks, and now... The British Empire had repaved and restored it for their own purposes. Mechanical uh, palanquins laden with trade goods jostled alongside troop transports, and Chordev thick street steam carriages imported from England. All were brightly painted, each one. <laughs> A man to gar garish ill taste. Oh god. I call myself a writer and I can't even say things right. I always complain about this in every playthrough I do. <laughs> My eyes hurt looking at blue skinned gods and pastoral scenes baking under searingly orange suns and interlocking patterns painted by unskilled hands. The day's journey passed quickly, a blur of color and sound, and it was only as the sun dipped below the horizon and the palanquins lit their. Uh, phosphorescent lamp said I realized we had reached the city of Labor, uh, but not for long. Already passing by that, passing by Delhi, and here we are. We were promised it was a particularly well-maintained stretch of road. I played whist with, whist with Monsieur Fogg with a pack of cards he had conjured up from somewhere. The mechanicals bearing our palanquin were so steady they barely jostled us at all. I won several rounds in a row, which seemed to please my master. You are improving, he said, giving me a nod. An afternoon well spent, though I was not sorry to see the ancient fortified walls of Delhi appear out of the haze of dust ahead of us. We continued on. I was weary of being on the road so long, despite the remarkable cities and sights we had seen since departing Kabul, yet when Agra came into view and tossed aside my, any resem remembrance of my journey upon the ancient Grand Trunk Road, at first I only saw... Ah, the Taj Mahal! Its towers nearly touching the clouds. I'd love to see the Taj Mahal. Oh, I had heard rumors, of course, but the truth of the vast walking city perched high atop its pillar-like mechanical legs, left me with only one question. How are we going to climb up the towering edifice to enter Agra before it departed? That is the question. Well, since I already have the case, might as well get this. Uh, let's take a look around. No, I wanted you to go to Benares. The, the perambular, perambulatory city of Agra was itself a wonder. The Mughal Emperor Saha. Jahan had wished to build a monument to his great love, Muntaz, and instead of a mere building, had commissioned a roving city, the vast white granite magnificent of the Taj Mahal perched on the plateau atop, atop its jointed, fortified legs. A fitting monument to great love, one that my Frenchman's heart could not disapprove of. Her sovereignty was a contested matter. The British had laid claim to her, but she passed through independent territories on her, uh, peregrinations. Her power source was an enduring mystery, one which still befuddled the various European engineers who had made her their life's work. As for me, I was just glad she worked. Her safety record was unpreachable, if one did not count the occasional sleeping farmer crushed beneath her granite-clad foot. 
We boarded Agra at noon. She would begin walking to Calcutta when the sun set, taking us with her on her unvary. Oh! It's already determined? There's no way. Aw, oh, man. Well, at least we're progressing, I guess. But what could I sell at Benares? Oh, this was going to be worth 6,200 pounds. I guess I need to look at the carpet and be determined to sell that, but... Still. Manila, Singapore, and Hong Kong. Would I be going near any of those places? Maybe eventually. Alright, sell that. So this. This. The linen trousers will help the high temperatures. Oh shit, and they're departing right now. Go. I can't believe it's a moving city. I can't believe there's a moving city that exists. Of course it's the Taj Mahal, too. Of all things. I've seen pictures of the Taj Mahal. That would be a great place to travel to and see. And then, of course, there's also the game Taj Mahal's, like... In civilization, Taj Mahal is like one one of the most iconic landmarks you can construct, which I always like to build. It's like one of the best ones, in my opinion. One of the scarlet cloaked city officials rang a brass bell, answering tolls echoed from all corners of the city of Agra. While the sound still echoed in my ears, the city lurched underneath me, tilting first to the left and abruptly to the right. We were off! The walk-in city had begun its circuit. <laughs> I felt rattled and jarred by the motion. It was enough to make a man think fondly of the pitch and roll of a clipper on the high sea, my friends. I want to get the Chichagong. Greetings. That's That doesn't help me. I hear that the Bengalis have their own autonomy. Did not help me at all. I was really hoping to know if I can get to here. I need to get to here for the sake of my money. Then I can spend all the money I want. For God's sakes. <laughs> no. Truth be told, the sound was more difficult to accustom myself to than Agra's multi-jointed gait. Her granite-clad feet pounded into the earth with enormous shuddering crashes that could be heard from even our rarefied station. I'm staying in the city center. <laughs> Screw going near the edge. If I was on this walking city, I would be nowhere close to the sides or the edges. It's like, I get... I actually get, like, a little bit dizzy when I'm looking over, like, a big, like grand height to where I'm worried that I'm just gonna like pass out and fall off I think I did that at one point like this is gonna be embarrassing at Sunsplash of all places the five-story slide and all that I peeked over and I was like <sighs> not a really good comparison I imagine but a comparison nonetheless I stayed in the city center. The plateau atop Agra's structure had been covered with a thick layer of fertile mud and planted with grasses and flowers so you could see the iron underneath where a bush had been dug up. A few birds even perched in the trees. But on closer inspection, I realized that half of them were cunning mechanicals with feathers of interlocking jade and amber and voices pure as gold. Yeah, I figured. They sang and chittered and preened alongside their flesh and blood compatriots. It was only fitting for a migrating city uh, with an engine for a heart. Hmm. 
No! Why do I keep missing the opportunities to talk? <laughs>